perhaps they have rejected perhaps the spirit of God. They have walked in the flesh, yet they are part of the body, but are walking in the flesh without the spirit of God. They are empty. They are men and women that are empty without a spirit. When they pray, they, they pray in emptiness. When they pray, they forge tongues of the spirit. You find a man cramming tongues of the spirit saying, Raka ba 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 ba, babbling words without meaning because they had another man who is with the spirit praying in other tongues. So a man with other spirit comes and the babbles to to, to, to manipulate the hearer that also is in spirit yet is manipulating. But you yourself, there is an inward witness in you that that is the spirit of God or that is a lie. That is manipulation. That is an impersonation. My brother and my sister, when the spirit of God comes upon you, everything will be done without struggling. Prayer will be done with all ease, with all peace. Salvation will be pleasing, will be a good thing. We will not struggle in walking in righteousness and in holiness. Why? The, the power of the Spirit of God will empower you to do the works of God, will empower you to pray, will empower you to fast, will empower you to read the Word of God, will interpret to you the Word of God by the revelation of the Spirit, will empower you to do and to serve the work the will of God which is passed for you, with other spirit, you will not serve your purpose upon the face of the earth. Because it's the spirit of God that knows your purpose as to why you are here upon the face of the earth. And it's him that will capacitate you to carry it on, to do it, to perform it, and to accomplish it. My brother, my sister, call upon the name of God today that you may be baptized with the spirit of the sovereign Lord. When we see a read in the book of Acts chapter 19, we shall find a church in Ephesus. This church had believed on God. It was walking in righteousness and in holiness in the, this church of Ephesus. It was walking in holiness, in righteousness, according to the word of God. But when Apostle Paul went to that church, Apostle Paul asked of this church that have you received the Spirit of God on the day that you believe on Him. Can we read together in that verse as we wind up? The Bible says that it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper course, came to Ephesus and found certain disciples. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? And they said unto him, we have not so much had whether there be an, uh, any Holy Spirit. And this is a question to you. Have you received the Holy Spirit from the day you believed the gospel? From the day you accepted Jesus? You may be a Catholic. You may be a, a, a Pentecostal. You may be a Baptist. You may be a Seventh-day Adventist. You may be from a certain denomination. If you may be praying from a certain church. You all say you believe on Jesus. That's good and right. But have you received the Holy Spirit from the day you believed on Jesus? Have you, believe, have you received that Holy Spirit? Is he a witness to you? Now, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you know that I have received the Holy Spirit. You know it. You know it very well that you've received the Holy Spirit. Here the Bible says in verse 3, And he said unto them, Unto what baptism yet were ye baptized? And they said unto the baptism of John. And, his, and they said, Paul, John very baptized unto repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him who should come after, that is, on Jesus Christ. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke with other gifts, with other tongues, and they prophesied, hallelujah, to the Lamb of God. So we see this church had not, uh, they, it, this church had believed on Jesus, it had believed on God, and uh, they were walking in righteousness according to God's word, but they were baptized in a wrong manner. They were not baptized in the name of Jesus. 
And that made them not to receive the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is given by Jesus Christ through believing on him, being baptized in him, and being immersed in him. So when you are immersed in Christ, when you've believed on him, you receive the Holy Spirit. He gives you the Holy Spirit that, you may, that the Holy Spirit may be a witness in you that you've been set apart for the holy purpose. You've been set apart for the kingdom of God. You are part of the Lord God Almighty. You are part of him and you'll inherit his kingdom and his life is in you. So this church had received a wrong of baptism and this church had not received that. Holy Spirit. And when it was made known to Apostle Paul, he spoke to them the true word of God, saying that it is expedient that every believer should be baptized in the name of Jesus. And I want to ask you, my brother and my sister, in which way were you baptized? Maybe the reason as to why you've not yet received the baptism of the Holy Spirit is because you received a wrong kind of baptism. May have been baptized in any other name other than, other than the name of Jesus. The Bible says that we were given only one name through which all men upon the face of the earth should be saved. In the name of Jesus Christ. So in which way were you baptized? Were you baptized in the name of Jesus or you were baptized in other names? Maybe in the name of Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Maybe in other form. Maybe you were baptized when you were still a kid without your faith, without your right consciousness. The Bible says for a person to obtain salvation, you must believe with your heart. You must believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, came in the flesh, died on the cross of Calvary, was buried, resurrected, and ascended on high. The moment you believe on Jesus with your own consciousness, and you accept him by a word of confession, then you receive salvation. You cannot enter into salvation when somebody else believes for you like the way our brothers from the Catholic Church do. They have not believed on the Lord Jesus yet because they received a wrong baptism because a certain God Father believed on their behalf and they believed on their behalf and they received a wrong kind of baptism which was not immersion but was sprinkling and they, they were baptized when they were young, when they were little without understanding, when they were still innocent. So my dear brother, if you receive a wrong baptism, that is a hindrance for the reception of the Spirit of God in you and upon you. And if you walk also in sin, it is a hindrance. There are brethren that after accepting Jesus still walk in sin deliberately, walk in sin, continue walking in wilderness after obtaining the word of God. The Bible says that the wrath of God is revealed against them that uh, walk in sin after they have received the word of God. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against them that walk in unrighteousness after obtaining the truth of the word of God, the truth of God. So if you walk in sin, it's a hindrance to the receiving of the spirit of the sovereign Lord. So I encourage you, my brother, receive the right kind of baptism. That is the baptism through one name that was ordained on earth where salvation is. That is the name of Jesus. Be a baptized in the name of Jesus and you will receive the spirit of the sovereign Lord. How do I know that I've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? You have to know it. There is always uh, there is a manifestation when the spirit of God comes upon you. Now there is a difference between the day you've accepted. This church in Ephesus, they believed on Jesus, but they had not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So they believed on Jesus, meaning they entered into the ark of salvation, but they had not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. For the baptism of the Holy Spirit to be revealed upon you, there is always that new birth experience 
where there is, when the Spirit of God comes upon you, there is a prophecy, there is speaking of tongues, there is a change of life, a change of the state of mind, change of lifestyle. You know it, that the Spirit of God upon you like a cloven tongues of fire. You get to know it that on this day I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I tell you, on the day I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit as an individual, I knew it that the Spirit of God came upon me because I saw it in the Spirit. I saw Him. I saw bright light like a white, uh, like a, a, a white rectangular cloud coming down. And it came upon me. I saw it and I received the power. And I knew that this is the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord. I know it. And nobody can claim, nobody can deny that of me that i have that inward witness that i received the spirit of the sovereign lord so question to you have you received the spirit of the sovereign lord upon you and in you i know in the day you receive jesus the word of god that you receive in you is the spirit the bible says that the word that is from the mouth of god is a spirit and it is life you receive the life of god in you the day you confess on jesus but it's expedient for you to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit that that word in you may be maintained, that that word in you may be satiated, that you remain walking in the power, that on the day of the appearance of the Lord that you may not be caught unaware, that you may not be ashamed, that you may not be left out. All men without the Spirit of God, they could not see the kingdom of God according to the book of uh, of Matthew chapter 25, when, this, when the, the, the midnight tower came, there was a voice sent forth, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. The wise virgin, because they had the oil, the oil is the spirit, came in into the bridegroom's chamber. But the foolish virgin, because he had no oil, was cast out was cast out and did not come in. My brother and my sister, get out of everything that had held you from receiving the Spirit of God. Be yielded right now. Yield your heart. Yield your mind. Yield your soul. Yield your faith. Give up on the things of the world and give yourself that the Spirit of God may come upon you. Lay aside every weight, every burden. Cast all your burdens to the Lord and the Spirit of God will come to you will capacitate you, will empower you for you to walk in righteousness, to walk in holiness, for you to please God in all your ways, and the fruit of God in you will be reproduced in you by the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, my brother and my sister. Pray that you may receive the Spirit of God today in the name of Jesus. Can I pray with you as we wind up? Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, where we've seen and understood that without the Spirit of God, nobody can inherit the kingdom of God. We will see the parable of the ten virgins, that five were wise and five were foolish. And we've known that the foolish did not come in because they had not the Spirit of God. But the wise came in because of the Spirit of God upon and in them. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Father, that you may send out thy Spirit upon us. Power out your Spirit, as you say in your word through the book of Joel chapter 228, that it shall come to pass in the last day that thou shalt power out thy spirit upon all of flesh, my God, upon all of flesh, including men and women, old and young, my God and my Savior. We pray today for the Holy Spirit in us and upon us, Lord, that we may be capacitated, that we may be strengthened and empowered to perform your will, to walk in holiness, to walk in righteousness, to do your will, to pray, to fast, to worship in the truth and the spirit. For the Bible said that the Lord is seeking for a people that is worshipping him in a truth and in a spirit. Father, we are so vulnerable without the Holy Spirit. And we pray today, my Lord and my Savior, power your spirit upon us in the name of Jesus. Baptize us with your spirit in the name of Jesus, my God and my Savior, that we may not be caught unaware, that we may partake of thy kingdom and that we may have dominion over all the powers of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen, amen. God bless you so much. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Amen.